Today, I was almost arrested in an airport for trying to film an airline review. You see, according to Google, Porter is considered to be Canada's best up and coming airline. So I wanted to see what they were really like, but there was one problem. I had a flight booked at an airport I have never been to before and everything that could have gone wrong ended up happening. So was it the airport's fault for what happened or was it the airline? I guess you'll have to stick around to see, but our adventure begins in Ottawa, Ontario, and I was not prepared for everything that was soon to come. So it is currently 6.45 in the morning and it is time to head to the airport. I'll be honest right now, I am super exhausted, but I'm also super excited because there is a secret that I haven't told you guys about yet. Good morning. For Eric? That's right. That's me. And after getting in the Uber, I made my way to the airport and little did I know this was about to be the most insane and crazy travel experience I have ever had in my life. Thank you so much. You too, have a good one. So fun fact, my flight was actually supposed to be last night, but because Ontario had a massive snowstorm, it ended up getting canceled until this morning. And it really doesn't surprise me that I have the worst of luck with these videos. And today I'm gonna to be flying from Ottawa International to Toronto International, but the first thing I think we have to do is see what the customer service is like. And full disclosure, the check-in process was perfectly fine and I could have printed out my boarding pass, but I'm gonna to lie to them and say I wasn't able to, just so we could see what they're like. And I almost forgot, I still have that secret I need to tell you guys but I'm gonna do that after the check-in process and after security but unfortunately this is where things took a turn for the worse and it's funny that 10 seconds earlier I was saying that I had a bad feeling but as soon as I got to the check-in area that is when a security guard came up to me out of nowhere if it's pre-arranged at least we know if it's a reporter of the media like CBC, TV. but is it not public Property technically? Private? Is it just Ottawa that does that? Sorry? Is it only Ottawa's airport? I'm not sure if the other one are private or not, but here for sure it is. But I've seen other people do videos on this airport before. When I was doing research for this, I okay. saw other people filming. They really need to have permission to do so. But what's it like, does that mean people can't take videos on their phones? They can't take Snapchat videos? Like, how do you restrict that? Well, the ones that we see on camera or if security advise the operations center that I, don't, I understand what you're saying. I don't want to play like, I don't want to be like. But let's say if you're coming in, let it know from the parkade and you're filming, if we don't see you and you post it. Yeah, I get that. I mean? I've just never experienced that like before. You control it 100%. Are you traveling today? Or you yeah, I'm flying okay. Porter. Okay. I'm making a video about them. So, a media relation line, I'll give you the phone number if you can just say. Okay, and will they be available right now? They should. Oh, yeah, I'll go give them a call. Thank you. Okay. And this put me in a very awkward situation because I was only flying today to review Porter and they said if I continued filming without proper permission then I would be removed from the airport. Or even worse, arrested. So apparently you're not able to film in the airport. I've traveled to so many airports and that has literally never been a thing. So naturally I gave the number a call but time after time it kept ringing all the way till the end until they started hanging up on me and I realized what was going on. Are you serious? It's literally ringing twice and they're hanging up on me. I'm gonna keep calling. Again, I don't know what to do right now. I literally tried calling and cannot get through to anybody. I'm gonna keep filming because I'm doing it for my own protection. Level two, administration. We're going there. So after realizing they didn't want to talk to me, I took things into my own hands and it was time for me to go and find them to confront them in person. I'm ready for my photo. I'm not allowed to film in the airport apparently. Every airport I've been to, I've been allowed to film. I do airport reviews, so I didn't know. Well, you, you can get permission. Do you know where the office is? Huh? No, where is it? Do you know? Right at the end there, to the left-hand side, you'll see the formal entrance. You get authorization to do whatever it is that you want to do, but they will limit what you can do. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. You are. Okay, so that was actually a Porter employee who told me where the administration office was. So big ups to Porter because that guy was super awesome. But now let's see if we can get permission to film in the airport because this is ridiculous. And going into the office, this is where things started to get tense. Hi, I have a question. Who would I speak to in terms of media relations? Uh, Someone gave me a number to call. I called them six times. I have a flight in like an hour and a half and they wouldn't respond. Yeah, I'll give you her email. Do you think she'll respond in the next hour? Because... Is she in today or anyone in today that could give me permission to film in the airport? Hi there. Hello, sir. Uh, 
Do you mind turning off in this office though? I'll blur it out, but I'm doing it for my own protection, just having recordings to prove everything. I just don't want to do it without audio. Okay. Um, I just tend to just film things just in case anything happens down the road. I have proof. Uh, you're also recording my voice right now, I see. It's just on me. It's a lav mic. Really? Yeah. Well, every time I'm talking right now? It's live. It's right there if you want to know. Supposed to be reporting unless you have authorization. I filmed at every other airport I've been to. I've been to basically every airport in Canada. I do airline reviews, and I've, I didn't know coming into this. I'm just trying to find the person to speak to to get permission. I, like I have nothing to do with the airport. I just want to get on my Porter flight to make my video about the airline and get out of here as fast as possible. Okay, I understand that. Do you see why I'm a little sort of Oh no, I, I understand 100%. Because we don't allow filming for anything. You have to have like, you're going through the protocol, which is great. Yeah, I just, I didn't, I didn't even know it was a thing. Okay, well, Do that's the information that's required. That's our email. Awesome. Reach out to her. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, sir. Have yourself a good day. You as well. In full transparency, there was a point where he grabbed the paper with the email and tried refusing giving me it because I was recording audio and eventually he gave it back to me, ending the conversation and it really just felt like I was being kicked out of the room. And this whole time they were trying to tell me it was private property, but it turns out that every airport in Canada is actually public owned by Transport Canada. And furthermore, there is no law in Canada that prevents a person from taking pictures or video in a public space. I am never going to be flying out of Ottawa International Airport again. And because I knew the email it wasn't gonna get me anywhere, I ended up calling multiple more times until eventually they picked up, and it was probably one of the most aggressive conversations towards me I have ever experienced. Awesome, sounds good. I, yeah, I apologize for the inconvenience. I just, I genuinely, I genuinely didn't know um, because it's never happened before, but it's a learning experience. Awesome, thank you so much, have a good one. All right, well, after seven times calling and going to the front desk and everything, they finally responded and they gave me permission. It almost sounded like they threatened me because they said, oh, I'm surprised you haven't encountered this at any other airport. But I'll be honest, I didn't even know that was a thing. But it turns out this wasn't the end of my problems because in just a few minutes, there was something that happens that nobody could have controlled. At least now we could finally do the check-in process. Good morning. Good, you? I was able to check it online, but I just wasn't able to print off my boarding pass. Do you have any bags you want to check in? Nope, just my backpack. Today? Oh yeah, sorry. Right. Awesome. <laughs> you Thank you so much. Have a good one, okay? You too, have a good one. And as always, Porter service is literally a 10 out of 10. And to make it even better, this time I also got a window seat as well. So thank you, Porter, for being so good to me after the terrible morning I've had with the airport. So the next thing I did was make my way through security so I could finally review the airline and tell you guys the secret that I have been keeping from you. Okay, so security ended up actually going super smooth and it was actually pretty quick. But I think the next thing we're gonna do is actually go and explore this airport and give a full review of it. And I'm not gonna let what happened earlier impact what I think of this place, because I don't think that's fair when administrative people dictate if an airport's actually good or not. So even though that was a terrible experience, this is gonna be a completely unbiased review. But compared to some of the other airports I've been to, this one is definitely on the smaller side. All of the gates are in one lawn area and there's a decent amount of things to do, but not nearly as many as the others I've been to. This airport had a few cafes, duty-free, restaurants, small history exhibit, bookstore, snack store, Canadian clothing and tech store, and two different lounges. But even though it wasn't a massive place, it was super modern and clean, which is a huge plus. You know, excluding everything that had happened earlier, I think this airport is actually pretty good. It's a little bit on the smaller side, but overall I'm gonna have to give it a solid eight out of 10. And if any of you guys decide to fly out of this airport, don't bring a camera either, but I still don't understand how you're allowed to film videos with phones, but a big camera is like a no-no. Okay, so now as promised, I'm gonna be telling you guys the secret that I haven't told you guys yet. So full transparency, I have actually flown Porter before, but only on their Dash 8 planes. And recently, literally two weeks ago, they started flying a brand new aircraft, and ever since, I have wanted to try it. Literally, whenever I travel, Porter is my go-to airline. I just think their economy experience is just above any other airline out there. And as soon as I heard they had jets, I wanted to see if it was gonna be the exact same thing. But anyways, while we're waiting here, I think that now would be a great time to tell you guys some facts about Porter. So number one, Porter was established way back in 2006, flying out of Toronto Island Airport, but they were only ever allowed to do short haul flights because the city banned them from expanding their runway to accompany jets. Number two, Porter has a total of 37 aircraft, with 29 of them being the Dash 8, and recently adding eight new Embraer jets to their fleet. This 
This means that instead of just being able to fly regionally, they can now do all of North America, into Mexico, and eventually into Europe. And finally, number three, since Porter was banned from expanding their home airport, they've now expanded into international airports such as Toronto, Montreal, and other Canadian hubs. But anyways, it is soon gonna be time to finally board the plane, and I am so excited because this is gonna be the best economy experience you have ever seen. I mean, hopefully. <laughs> but as I was getting ready to say goodbye to the security from earlier, I went over to the gate and realized that the plane I thought I was getting on actually wasn't there. And instead, it was this tiny one. So obviously, I needed to see what was going on. Hi, um, do you know if like the Porter jets are flying later today or no? Like the Embraer jets? Is that one of the later flights today or is it only the Dash 8s? Do we have later on jets? No. If there's not, that's fine. So yeah, not today. Okay, thank you though. Thank you. I literally traveled all the way from Toronto to here to fly the new jet. And because of the delay yesterday and the cancellation, I guess there's no jets available and it's just on one of their dash aids. Oh, this is such a fail. But even though I'm incredibly upset that all of this happened, we're still gonna try and make the most of it. I wanted to review their dash aids down the road at some point anyway, so at least that kind of works out. But I promise you in a future video, we will be reviewing the jets. As a matter of fact, I have already booked a flight on the jet that is 100% going to happen. But in the meantime, I got my boarding pass scan and made my way onto the Dash 8 because at least we're going to be reviewing something today. Right off the bat, I made my way through the plane to my window seat where I was lucky enough to have the entire row to myself. Compared to some of the other planes Porter has, this was one of their older ones, but it was still super clean with big comfortable seats, a decent amount of overhead space for bags, and massive windows, which was a huge plus. Now, because I was one of the last on the plane, we left pretty much right after I sat down, and soon enough, we were taxiing towards the runway and in the air before I knew it. Once we were in the sky, I started exploring my seat a bit, which had lots of legroom and a good-sized tray table, which was perfect for the complimentary snacks and drinks that came around, which were super good. After that, I decided to check out the in-flight magazine, which showed the entire menu, all the destination Porter flies to, and even the new plane I was supposed to be on. But I'll explain what happened more in just a few minutes. Now that we were halfway through the flight, I decided to check out the bathroom, which was a little bit tight, but it was still super clean and completely normal for a plane this size. But before I knew it, we were making our way into Toronto, where I got one of the most insane views I have ever seen of the city and a perfect landing to end the flight. But now what happened and why wasn't there a jet today like there was supposed to be. Well, remember earlier when I told you my flight got delayed until today because of the massive snowstorm? Because of that, the four jets that Porter currently have got stranded in their original location, so they weren't able to make it to Ottawa in time for this flight. So at the end of the day, it wasn't Porter's fault, and the only thing we could blame is Mother Nature. But the good news is I already booked another flight on the jet, and that video is going to be coming out in just a few weeks. So make sure you're subscribed because that video is going to be coming out very soon.